if you if you look at the um, simplified uh, model, why we call it steady state? We call it steady state because we are ignoring like the inductance of the coil itself. And the induct if you have the inductance, as you, as you know from electric circuit, if you have inductance and uh, resist resistance in the circuit, so it takes like time to rise up to reach the current or the voltage. And we call this like time constant. Each circuit has time constant. But in the city state means we are ignoring this rising. Just we reach the city state. So all the study in the city state. And that's good for undergraduate course. That's, that's, that's good enough. That's why I mean we call it steady state mode. And that's separately exact DC generator because the field winding source is separated from the machine itself. And you have the resistant RFEC. You can change it to change the field current. And uh, consequently, you can change the magnetic field that it's uh, uh, affecting the armature. So the magnetic field or the magnetic flux produced by the field will intersect with the armature and the armature already rotating, rotating by speed, not producing the speed, rotating by the prime mover. So this rotating conductor, when there is magnetic field, so it will produce EMF. So it will produce EMF, EA, that's the armature or induced armature voltage, EA will be produced and the current now supplied by the image, opposite to the motor, the motor that, that, that it was, I mean, driven uh, or drawn from the source. No, now that's now producing the armature, producing the current going in this direction. So, what do you expect? I, we expect that the terminal voltage VT is going to be less or more than here. More? More. More? Oh, what's your name? The terminal voltage VT is more or less than EA. Because Less because there will be drop voltage across the armature if the current going in this direction. And we just said that EA is induced, that's produced by the action of the prime mover, uh, the rotation prime mover and magnetic flux. So it's produced. And then when the current uh, go in this direction, so you will have a voltage drop uh, across uh, the armature, our AIA, and then what's left VT. In motor, it was the opposite. VT was more because it was the supply. So we have the battery here, VT, and then the current going this direction, drop will be across the armature resistance, and then what's left will be EA. So EA is the production, so it'll be more than VT. And that's why in this equation, you will see that uh, the induced DMF is equal VT blood damage, small. So E is bigger than VT. The same equation, the induced DMF, uh, or even if we add the torque, the torque will be the same equation. The induced DMF is proportional to the speed. Every time you are going to increase the speed of the prime mover, like uh, when you do in the lab, the using as a prime mover, you will, you will observe the speed increasing and then the voltage is increasing. That's the way that you uh, get a higher voltage or bigger voltage. And if you are connecting a load resistant, resistive load RL, so uh, the current IA, that's supposed to be IA coming from the armature IA, but it, at, at the same time, uh, it's IT, the terminal current, the same, they are equal. So IA, you can say, going through the, resi the resistive load, so you can calculate the voltage across the terminal by multiplying the current IA or I terminal times the resistive load. In this case, as we said, that both currents are the same because there is not, no branching, nothing like that. When? So it's, uh, that's the only difference. The only difference you can observe this equation. 
in molar equation, EA will be equal VT minus REI in molar equation. All right. Let's uh, check the first uh, uh, problem here. We have, and by the way, in, uh, uh, through uh, the DC machine, when we mention any related value voltage or current, that will be, uh, uh, that will belong to the armature. Like uh, if, I, if, I, if there's a voltage, uh, 100 volts, that will be the armature volts EA. If we say that uh, 10 amp, that will be IA, all right? That's, I mean, in the, in the textbook that you're using, that's in the way that you the agree about. So let's look at this DC shunt generator. Uh, that's the power, 12 kilowatt, 100 volts, 1000 RPM. And the armature resistance giving here is 0.1 ohm. And the shunt field winding 80 ohm. The number of uh, turns, the field current is one amp. Everything is given, and then said that the machine is operated as a separately excited DC machine. Uh, yes. That's the, 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 the power, right? That's what going on. Twelve kilowatt. That's the developed power. Yeah. So we, we, they said that they are going to connect it as separately excited DC generator. They will not connect the field and shunt with the armature. Because when you connect the field uh, in parallel to the armature, it has an issue. And I'm going to explain it in the second example. But this one separately. So we don't have problem. I mean, you have source for the field. You have, uh, uh, so, uh, and then you, you get the output from the armature. So if you, if you, if you wish, we can, we can sketch it like this way. So that would be the, That's the armature. So we have the RA, and the output will be in this way. And you got the field. And they said that the field. Uh, the rate field current one m, so I f is equal to one m, and R f is given. R f is given eighty ohm, and the armature resistance, of course, is very small, point one ohm, and giving the voltage armature at speed one thousand rpm, so the speed is equal one thousand r. BM. Well, let's see what they ask for. And they give you the relationship between the voltage and IF. We call this magnetizing curve. And what is magnetizing curve? It's the relationship between IF and the induced EMF, the armature voltage. Usually, it, it, it will look like that. That's the every time you are increasing the, the the field current, the reduced voltage EA will increase. Why? Because you know that EA is equal constant of the machine flux and omega. So if we're operating this machine at constant speed. And that's the situation in this exam, because they said at 1,000 RPM, so at 1,000 RPM. Now what you're controlling the voltage, the voltage EA, the flux, what's controlling the flux? Produced by IF, so you can say it's equal Ka, and phi, let's call it Kf, IF, omega M. In this case, all these constants. So you can say EA is equal constant times IF. This straight line relationship, it's true uh, if you are operating on the first portion of this curve. But after a while, the magnetic field saturated, start to bend, you know, make it like a knee at the curve and start to be fixed. After that, you cannot 
doesn't matter how much current you're going to increase. And there, there is a physical uh, uh, physics uh, explain that because inside any uh, material they have um, like little magnetic balls constructed by molecules if uh, I know you don't like physics but I like physics because explain everything if you have inside the particles they, are, they arrange themselves like little dipoles you know or balls and uh, north and south this is north and south small you know and the all uh, random, their direction is random. So that's why I mean it's uh, the total is equal to zero. And then when there is something, some energy can direct them in one direction, you find all of them, they are aligned, they're all north in one direction. So, so when you are increasing the field current, you are aligning these dipoles of this uh, little magnetic poles, you know, in one direction. And once it reach its maximum, the all molecules or all the balls you are aligned, you can get more max. So it's done, saturated. So that's why it's in the beginning increasing linearly, responding, and, and then what's left small, so it's not many. So that's why it starts the curve bending, you know, like that. It's not continuously increasing, no. The, de the increasing rate decreasing. So bend and become saturated, call this saturated. That's what the world saturation curve. So that's the, the physical meaning of the. But uh, so this relationship, uh, it, it's it's valid only for the uh, this portion. In this example, just to make it simple, we make it straight line, and I give you the uh, straight line uh, representation of uh, this portion we're going to work on. Um, and I would say that when I, it's 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 for if greater than point nine. Anyway. Said neglect the armature reaction effect because the armature reaction can affect the, the, the field current. Determine the terminal voltage at full load. That's the simple thing we ask. Said they want to find the, the voltage here, the terminal voltage, when operated at full load. Okay. How I can get the information of, it, uh, of the full load from the data? The plate that's on the model itself, the rated value, that's the full load. Okay. To find VT, that's the way you think. You want to find VT. So VT, it has only one equation. The voltage here will be equal EA minus the drop because the current, uh, the armature current will be in this direction. So that's what you know. So the voltage, the terminal voltage is equal the produced armature voltage minus the drop. In this equation, what we know, and we know RA. RA is given here 0.10. All right. We need to find IA and EA. All right. First, how I find EA, the induced EMF? The induced EMF, I can get it if I know IF, if, I know, if the curve is available for me. So just I can do, what I can I do? I, I, I go, I say, okay, the IF is one M. So I go for one M. That's IF is equal to one M. And then I go there, I look for the E and just I read from the curve, I give it. And that's very practical because usually in any discipline, they give you this magnetization or magnetizing curve. They give you the characteristic and you give it at different speeds, at, but truly they give it at graded speed. So if this curve giving at 1,000 RPM, I can, I can read EA. Well, uh, but in any way, they said it's working at the, the, the rated value. At the rated value. Well, the rated value, uh, how much you're going to get? You're going to get 100 volt. We well, agree that this is the armature voltage. Rated value and the working at rated value. So I would say, okay, my E is, is equal to 100. Where I got it from? I got it from the data. Why? Because we, we agree that this value will be um, representing armature and the current also armature current. All right. Now uh, I have only something left the current. The armature current. How I get the armature current? Well, this is working at full load. What is the full load? 
is given 12 kilowatt. So I will say to get the armature current, uh, I will just write note here, uh, the power is equal EA, IA. So IA will be equal to the power. What is that? Develop power divided by EA. So the power is equal to 12 kilowatt divided by the voltage 100. And you get that. It's equally well, it's equal to 120, I think. But this is what I, I, I do, and then, then I, I can find the terminal voltage is equal 88 voltage. And you might think, oh, but you made it open circuit here. No, they ask for the full load. Obviously, it means if they have load and this load take 120 amp, the full load, how how many volts will be in the terminal voltage? It's not open, no. You ask a full load. Full load is not open. Generator cannot work, operate at full load, and there is no load connected. So there is not connected. Didn't mention it. But what matter? What's important is the current. And I got it. So the voltage is equal 88. Simple. All right. And I didn't include armature reaction. And B said consider the armature reaction at full load is equivalent to 0 0.06 field amps. What does it mean, armature reaction? Armature reaction, because when the magnetic field reduced by the field interact with the, with the, with the winding and the conductors and the armature, and the, the armature will, uh, uh, of course, current will, armature current will, will flow in, in, in this uh, winding of the armature. And then it will reduce some magnetic field also. So this magnetic field is going to affect the main magnetic field in the field. So we put it on natural action. So it will make it less. Why it make it less? It's kind of reaction. You said before that's in the universe. In the universe, everything has reaction trying to minimize the effect. If somebody want to push me back, I'll try to resist it to push him in on the front. If somebody pulling me, I'm trying to win the other. It's, it's, it's the nature. Yeah. Is it amateur current that causes amateur armature reaction? Of course, that's what we call amateur. Yes. Okay. When the amateur current, if there is, if you don't have amateur current passing in there, you don't have much reaction. That's right. So they said that it's going to uh, affect it as uh, 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 equivalent to 0.06 field amps. That's amateur. That's amateur reaction. Means like the field current without counting the effect of the armature action is one M. If you are going to count now uh, the armature action, so you got to subtract the 0 0.06 M that caused by the armature action. So now I will say with armature reaction, the field current, uh, you can say that the effective value will be equal to the, the I field minus the, the 0 0.06. I field is 1 amp minus 0 0.06. We'll get 0.94 amp. So now that's the field count, the new field count. In this case, what effect, what, what effect uh, is going to happen? What do you think? If the field current is changed, so this equation that the values I used, I cannot use all of them. Something will be affected. Armature action, yes. EA. 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 Will affect EA. Why will affect EA? Because EA is affected by the field current. So I, I, in the beginning, I used the normal value, the normal value, nominal value, because I mean I was using the nominal uh, field current. That's the nominal value. I one m field current nominal. That's nominal. So it will, it will get a nominal value of induced voltage. Now I don't have nominal value, so I got to, I got to go to the curve now, go, not go for one M, go for 0.94. Well, I'm going to use the uh, approximation here, this linear relationship to find EA. So I will say EA now, the new EA, uh, it's equal to 70, 1.68, 
plus 28 if that's the equation and I, I plug if here 0.94 so I get the new value um, which will be equal to uh, 98 voltage so dropped two volt and I'm going to uh, use the same the same values I did before to find Bt would be equal Ea minus Ra Ia. All of them are the same except only that's point one. That was 120 m, and then I'll get the voltage. Of course, will uh, decrease with 86 voltage. Okay. Now I want to. Uh, do the same the same problem for the shunt because in shunt will have a separately excited no problem it, the field has its own but what about if uh, if we have a shunt when we have a shunt let me sketch the the, the shunt generator you have the armature and you have the resistance Ra. And here, for example, you're going to have the load at the terminal voltage. And that's the field. And that's the prime mover rotating the shaft. How voltage is produced? Well, we'll go to the basic equation Ea is equal constant. Phi, omega, great. Now, omega m, the rotational speed, I have prime mover rotating, so I have it. But the flux, I get the flux. Yes. Yes. The difference that the field uh, the field winding, let's call it RF, is connected in parallel to the arch. The other one was separately excited, like its own battery, like the own source. So it's just the same problem, just connected? Just connected, yes. What's that called? It's not something sided? What's the shunt? No, I, uh, shunt, yes. Good shunt. Like Easy one, shunt. Well, what's like a set? What was but set? not self excited. Self excited shunt or series. But what we did? Previously, the first example was separately excited, DC separately. But I wasn't excited because it was stuff No, no, no. Yeah. Separately excited. Okay, yeah. So now, and to, to get the voltage produced in the armature, we have to have two things, right? Rotation, we have the key. That's a bit. Okay. Right. We have the rotation speed, it's rotating by the prime, prime mover. But what about the flux? How the flux is produced? That's the question. Um, I hmm? IF, okay. How we get IF? You don't have source. And, and the other problem, we have a separate source and the source supply the current IF to the field. But here, you don't have. Hmm? BT. BT, no, BT is produced by the oxygenator, not the motor. It's produced. We said that uh, to produce the voltage, it has to rotate and you have to have magnetic field. It's rotating, yes. But you still fine. Produced by IF, we don't have it yet. So how we get the mixture voltage? Okay. Obviously, it's a problem. Why? Because I mean, if if you don't have IF, but first IF, what is the source of IF? Just take the problem step by step. What is the source of IF? Our, our mixture voltage, 
E, e, we don't have anything except EA. So you got to have EA, and the EA will reduce our mixture current IA, and then it comes here split. That's the terminal current, and that's the IF. But you got to have EA, and EA to be produced, you got to have flux. Okay, it's the chicken or bag first, you know. So you got to have flux. So that's true. You have to have flux. So the solution is you got to have some residue, residue of magnetic that left in the machine. If it's zero, it will never produce, it will never rotate, it will never rotate. So it depends that there is some residue of magnetism left over, left over magnetism in the machine. Or you got to magnetize it before you start. If you didn't magnetize it, it will not. But it, it is always there is a, 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 it's not zero magnetism in the machine. There is always left. Even uh, when you study uh, in, in physics, the hysteresis uh, characteristic of any uh, magnet, let me remind you by. Uh, But if you start to uh, magnetizing any material, so what happened? The, that's if this H and that's B, you start to have flux. When you, and H, uh, uh, how you get it by current, like if you have a coil and then you are changing the voltage, the current, then you find that the, the flux, this is the flux, increasing till it gets saturated. And if you start to decrease the current back, it never comes to, never go back on the same straight line. Never. Because uh, that's why I'm saying physics is very important. Because when, when uh, I told you before, you have like uh, dipoles of magnets, small magnets in the material. And then when you do the current, then they start to align, align. That's how you get, you build the magnetic field. And then when you decrease the current, not all the dipoles or the little magnets inside the material, they can go back. Not all of them, they can. So when you go back, even the current is zero, there is something left. They have direction. And then you continue. We call this hysteresis. You know. I don't know if you study this skill in, uh, in uh, physics or not. That's magnetism. When you magnetize anything. So always we have residue. This residue, it means current is equal to zero. You have left off of magnetism. Without that, the generator will not operate in uh, self-excited chunk DC mode. So that's true. Will depend on the residue. And let me show you the interesting curve here. This curve, the magnetizing curve. And this the, uh, represent the relationship of the field what does it mean the field, the straight line? Well, look at this field. The voltage across the field, call it VF, and the current IF. So what is the relationship? VF is equal RF, IF. How you sketch the relationship between IF and VF, straight line, and the slope is equal to RF. So that's the characteristic of the field. And the characteristic uh, between EA and IF, the magnetizing curve, it, it, it looked like that, All right? So you got two curves. In the beginning, we depend on this value, the residue. Let me show you now how big. Now we start with, with the small value, the residue value, and this voltage will be applied to the field. What do you mean apply the field? Here, that's the field RF, and that's RA, and that's the armature connecting parallel. RA is very small, as in the previous example, 0.1 ohm, and RF was 80 ohm. So it's like, I mean, if you say 100.1, it's like 1,000 times. So you can neglect the drop across RA. So EA, that produced by the residue or leftover magnetism in the material will be applied on RF. So in this case, VF will be equal EA. So the current will start to build in the field. So that's why I'm, make, I'm making, I mean, that's the residue. If you make a voltage like that, 
intersect the character. This is the field uh, system, uh, IFRF. It will intersect here. It built IF. IF, if you go IF, okay, already now have IF. IF will produce flux. This IF produces flux. It will affect the machine and get the voltage EA2. And then this voltage will be applied. Again, we apply it across the field. It will reduce the current IF2. And IF2 is going to produce another voltage, EAT. And so on, you continue like that, like you will, you go to, to the uh, equilibrium point. That's where you reach the voltage of the machine by using the leftover magnetism or the residue of the magnetism. But that's why, I mean, that's, you see, I mean, it's very important to understand how the machine operates, how you analyze, because you cannot just get field resistor in value. You know why? Because if you do that, maybe you will choose the wrong resistor of the field and it will not operate. Remember that also we control the field by adding rheostat. Maybe you, you use the wrong value of the resistor. You have to ask me why you are saying that maybe I use the wrong value of the resistor for simple reason. What is the RF in circuits RF is the slope? It's the ratio between the voltage and current. You can have 10 ohm, 30 ohm, 50 ohm. Can you tell me which one has bigger value? This is RF1 and that's RF2. Which one is bigger, RF1 or RF2? RF2? Let's see. If you have, if you have 1 amp, you can have 20 voltage here. You have 10 voltage here. So if you divide it 20 by 1, 20 ohm, that's right. So RF2 is bigger than RF1. So now we go to the question. What does it mean I can use the wrong value of the resistor? Can you answer this question? If there is a wrong value? Yeah, that's right. You can choose. Imagine if you choose the resistance and it was like that. It will never, the voltage in the, when you start, it will never get it. So it will never build. And you'll never get use of the uh, residue value. So the, there is something called critical value resistance that when you make it tangent to the scale, tangent, tangent the straight line, this is the critical value. You should not increase RF more than this value. Otherwise, the machine will not run. You will not get voltage. Yes. Because it has to be there. Intersect. Here, I mean, where is the intersection here? It will not reach anywhere. So we call it the critical resistance. This one tangent uh, to the curve itself. But you can choose any one after that. That's how you choose the resistance. So, at least at the starting. Okay. Let's take one example. The same one, but uh, we are connected. Uh, we are connecting the the. Uh, the field in parallel to the armature, and I'm going to calculate everything. Plus, I'm going to take with me the actual curve, the magnetizing curve. I'm not going to approximate by straight line. I'm taking, I'm taking this. That that's actual one, and it's sketched at 1,000 RPM. All right. So in the beginning, to determine the maximum value of the generated voltage. First, that's the same data. Of the decisions I used before, I just connected uh, in in parallel or in shunt, and the magnetizing uh, characteristic it, it's it's uh, at 1,000 RPM shown in the figure I showed. The DC machine is operated as a self-excited. Self-excited means shunt or series, but here it means shunt. Self-excited shunt generator at no load. Now no load means you are not connected resistance to the output. Determine the maximum value of the generated voltage. So how you would do that? I will uh, sketch the equivalent circuit. That's EA. And that's the resistance, or A, one point ohm. And now that's connect in parallel. You have restat. 
and that's the terminal voltage still open. So, and IA will be in this direction, and IF will be here. So, uh, in the beginning, I mean, you will make this zero, not, not uh, just, I mean, you have only RF, which is equal to 80 ohm. You're not going to add any more resistance. Uh, so, in, in this case, RF will be equal to uh, 80 ohm. And I want to find the corresponding EA. How to find the corresponding EA? You got to go to the curve, right? Remember, RF is equal to 80 ohm. So I go to the curve, and I will sketch or plot straight line representing 80 ohm. 80 ohm, and you can, how can you do it? Like, for example, if you say, um, uh, if you choose 0.4, so you can say 0.4, You can say at 0.4, if you multiply it by 80, what you get? 32. So you go at 0.4 and 32. Let me just make it something fast. So 0.4. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Point, that's 0.4. And we said that the value will be equal to 32. That's 32. Let's just say 32, just something like it. So that's one point. And you have the origin. And then you connect. Oops. We try to connect. And here is intersection with the with the with the curve. That's where I find my EA. So I go there and I look at the value I find is equal, let's say 111 voltage. So I'll say now I go back, say using the curve. I just did sketch. That's the magnetizing. I did my 80 ohm RF, and the intersection gave me 100 volt. So EA is equal 111 voltage. That's how you get the armature volts using the music. Or so this will be the operating point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now. Uh, I want to find the terminal voltage. The terminal voltage is simple because I know the equation, terminal voltage. Equal to EA minus the drop, RAIA, right? Uh, if you have no load, so IA will be equal to zero. So it will be equal to EA. So it will be equal 111 voltage. Oh, uh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, that, that's the that's the max that's the maximum generated maximum generated voltage. Yes. How do you determine that there's no drop? That first RA times IA zero. How do you determine that? Yeah. Because there's no Yes. Okay. Yeah. All the current going to the field. Okay. What about if uh, we want to determine the value of the field circuit control resistance RFC? Now we want to control it by the restart. Uh, required to generate rated terminal voltage. Okay. Now this uh, R restart, as you see it in the, in the uh, what to call it here, R. Field control, FC. We want to adjust it so I can generate the nominal voltage, which is 100 volt. 100 volt. All right. So what I will do, I will go to the I will go to the curve in the same curve there, and I go for the 100. Right. And I find the point. I said, okay, that should be the field resistance line. So. I'm connecting now this point by the origin. And then you calculate the slope of this one, or you can go and see the IF, and then you find the, the slope that will give you RF total. Let's say that uh, that's at 100 volts. 
uh, let's say that comes at one, uh, by luck by one. So at 100 voltage, 100 V, E A, uh, I F was equal one M. So when you divide R F total, that's the total value will be equal 100 divided by 100 ohm. But the field resistance by itself is equal 80 ohm. So what you're supposed to do? I add to new. So R field control is equal to R field total. I just got it. Minus the R field winding. The total is 100. The winding is 80 ohm, 20 ohm. So I if I adjust the resistor to um, uh, 20 ohm added to the field winding, I will get 100 voltage. There is a voltage. Obviously, when I increase the resistance, I decrease IF. When you decrease IF, you decrease the magnetic field. You decrease the magnetic field, you decrease the armature voltage EA, which is 100 less than 100 left. So it makes sense. You have, you have to always I mean, rationalize your answer. It makes sense or not. So that's 20 ohm. OK. Determine the value of the critical field circuit resistance. What is the critical? One, we said the critical that will be tangent to the straight line. So just to make a tangent to this line and find any slope. You find the slope of this one. How, or you can just get any value like at 80 ohm at this line and just go see what the value of the current. Divide them. This is the R, crit R critical. R critical means RF winding plus R field winding. The total should not exceed this value that you got. Of course, we'll never work on the critical value. Always we we'll have we we'll have less this. But this is I mean it will help you. The last thing I want to say, and you can uh, we can put it an example. The same flow of power will be the same flow of power of more except the opposite. If you remember, the model, the input was electric. Now the, the input is mechanical. So if you go back, you say the mechanical power, the input, let me just go, uh, that would be the mechanical power. And then you will have some rotational loss, mechanical loss. Then what you got here, the developed power, which is EA, IA, and then some drop cover loss. And the resistor. And then in the end, you get the output part. What is the output part? VTIT. And from the, this is the same as the model, just the opposite. The opposite. So wait, then you can you can calculate the, the loss and the efficiency. Yeah. You will find more solved examples in the Foley system. It's already uploaded since last week. And by this, uh, we're done with, um, with the DC machine. And of course, you can read. I mean, now if you read even uh, more you want to get more information you can read from any textbook from uh, from google and you still have to do the the lab and then the lab you'll discover other things and then you you are going to do the the quiz the simple quiz so that day the only big problem as i said is going to be like uh, up to i think monday or tuesday you think about it it's about series dc model any question